I'm Sophie McKenzie, and my latest book is a teen novel, a mystery, uh, called All My Secrets. And it's basically about a girl called Evie Brown, a very ordinary girl. One day, she gets a knock on the door, a lawyer comes around telling her she's been given this massive inheritance, massive amount of money from somebody, I don't want to give too much away, but from a family member she's never heard of, didn't even know existed, which re throws her whole life upside, turns it upside down, because she realises her parents, one of whom actually is not one of her, but don't want to give too much away, as I say, but she finds out her parents have been lying to her. And this sends her into a complete spin and she goes in search of the truth about the relative and that journey takes her into a, a Scottish island and a lot of danger. And she does eventually uh, end up in life-threatening situations and there's a big dollop of romance, there's a little bit of a love triangle in there as well. Actually, the, the, the Scottish island was sort of inspired from my memories of going to Skye many, many, many years ago when I was a teenager myself. Uh, the, the island that she goes to is much, much smaller, but still the sort of beauty and the slightly mysterious feel that some, sometimes some of the landscapes can have. Uh, that was from, from that memory of mine. And even more specifically, this is the Edinburgh Festival. I love the Edinburgh Festival. And there is a scene set when she goes to visit someone to get some information in Rose Street, which I know through having been here many times. So, so yeah, the Edinburgh Festival is part of the inspiration for the setting of the book, or some of it, in Edinburgh. The main character in All My Secrets, uh, Evie, as I say, she's quite an ordinary, ordinary girl. She's, um, she's, quite insecure about how she looks. I, I, I sometimes, you know, I, I sometimes get slightly frustrated that we're only expected as YA authors, we're only expected to write girls who are very feisty and already um, got everything in their lives sorted, uh, fearless young women. And it's not like that for everybody. I mean, it's great when it is, but Evie's a little, I mean, she's a strong person, but she's not necessarily super confident. There's another girl in the book called Pepper who is very confident and, and very funny as well. Uh, and there's a real contrast between the two of them. It, they become very good friends through the, through the book. Um, but, but Evie, she, she does start out a little bit insecure. And then of course, she's completely thrown by firstly getting this massive inheritance and secondly, discovering her parents have been lying to her about her own identity. So it's, uh, yeah, she's, a, she's hopefully an interesting character, somebody we can, it, it's easy to relate to and like, hopefully. For, for YA authors, there are certain areas that um, I, I suppose you have to be more aware that, because well, I write adult books too, and there are certain areas where I certainly have to be more aware of what I'm writing. So, for instance, um, anything that's remotely sexual content or swearing or violence, I really need to think very carefully about how that's presented in a book for younger readers, whereas when you're writing with adult readers in mind, there's less, there's less need to censor yourself. Um, I, I don't find that problematic because um, I, I think sometimes swearing actually can be a bit of a, a cop out, like it's easy to come up with a swear word and sometimes when you have to find a, a way of, express, of the characters expressing themselves without using swearing, um, it's a bit more of a challenge but you can actually end up with something more interesting as a result. So. And then, and then when you do swear, it has much more impact. But anyway, just to say, I, I don't generally have swearing in my, my books. Is there a line between YA and adult fiction? It's a very fuzzy one, if there is a line. And, and I, you know, I, I guess I don't really see how there can be a line because a line would require somebody in authority to draw a line. And, and I don't know who that person would be. I think there are conventions and they shift as time passes. Um, certainly, I, I think any individual author has to decide for themselves what they are and aren't comfortable with writing about. And then any publisher has to decide the same from their point of view. It's always, it's always very hard to recommend other 
um, authors, not because there are millions of great authors out there, but because I'm always very aware that the enjoyment of books is so subjective. Um, books that I've enjoyed very much recently, YA books that I've enjoyed, a series that I've enjoyed, that I think is quite... Um, has the same sort of feel as a lot of the things I write, so the bit of the romance, but the, the sort of essential, exciting, thriller-driven plot as well, is the Night School series by C.J. Doherty, which I thoroughly enjoy reading myself. I, 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 uh, yeah, I definitely recommend them. If you like the kind of stuff I write, you might well enjoy those. Well, only I'm only aware of other YA writers in other countries when they get translated into English uh, through my own ignorance of their of their language basically uh, which is a shame you know but that's a that's a very typically British thing isn't it to to, to not be fluent in five different languages this but as you said uh, um, I'm on my, my event is with a Finnish author. I'm very excited about about that. I think it's great that there's that international kind of cooperation and and presence at the festival. The the fact that you can come to the festival maybe to see one author and then get information, be inspired to go off and read uh, the work of three or four other authors is one of the reasons why festivals are, are a fantastic. Um, place to come and you meet other you know you're hanging out basically with other people who love books too the writers and the other readers so it's, it's all good uh, my name is Salla Simukka I'm an author for Finland and today I will be talking about my trilogy the Snow White trilogy and mostly about the first part of the trilogy called As Red As Blood uh, As Red As Blood is a book about a young girl named Lumikki. Lumikki means actually Snow White in Finnish. And she's 17 years old and she finds this money in the dark room of her school. And then when she finds the money, she gets involved with this really dangerous situation. It's a crime thriller set in very, very cold winter in Finland. Uh, my, main, my main character, Lumikki Andersson, she is, well, you could call her like a strong female character, but lately I have been thinking about why do we call these girls strong female characters? Because if she were a boy with, this, uh, with all this that she has, we wouldn't call her a strong boy. And why is that? So I think that Lumiki is, she's a girl who has her strength, she has her weaknesses, but she's like a quite cool combination of those. She's quite secretive, uh, quite tough, and well, she's not, she's not a kind girl, you might say, but she's a girl that when you learn to know her, you will love her. The first book, uh, As Red As Blood, it's set in Finland, in Tampere, which is the second largest city in, in Finland. It's also my home city, so I know all the streets and, and all the places I'm writing about. But the, actually the second book is set in Prague, but then the third book is, um, is set in, in Finland. To be a writer in Finland, and especially to be a writer for young adults in Finland, it's, uh, well, you can't actually make a living uh, out of writing to young people in, in Finland because the country is so small, we have a population of about six million people. So there aren't that many readers actually in, in, in Finland so that you could support yourself just by writing books. But I think that it's great that all of us who write for uh, young adults or for children in Finland, we form quite a, quite a strong community and we are friends. Most of my and my best friends are actually Finnish writers. And what was quite surprising about the Snow White trilogy was the fact that even though I wrote about a Finnish girl in Finland, and now people in nearly 50 countries are going to read about a girl in Finland. So you don't have to think about that, okay, my country is small, I can't write a best-selling book <laughs> if it's set in Finland. That's not how it goes, because if you read a book, you want to know about why this writer has written this book. If I had written a book set in, let's say, London, how would it be different from all the hundreds and hundreds other books set in London? So I, I wanted to write about something I really know. And, uh, and the funny thing is also that even though the main character, Lumiki, she is a Finnish girl, but I have had these letters coming from, from Israel, coming from Canada, coming from 
from all over the world, uh, from people who are saying that they can really connect with her. So there is something really universal about the main character, about how she feels about the world. So that it's not just that people are reading about some weird Finnish girl, they are reading about themselves. And that's always, I think, the best thing about literature, that you can find yourself in characters that are not exactly like you, but they have these qualities that are exactly the same as you have. I, I was uh, I was in, involved with the translation process of As Red As Blood because I also knew that there will be translators who are going to use the English translation because there aren't translation, translators who can translate from, let's say, from Finnish to Indonesian so that they would have to use the English translation. So I had to make sure that it is really correct. Uh, but I'm also actually a translator myself. I have translated books from Swedish to Finnish, so I know a bit about the process. And I also know that the writer, the author, is not always the best person to say how the book should be translated, because it, it has to be someone who really, really knows the language. So I was happy to have a great translator, Owen S. Whiteman, and he also has made a translation both for the UK and the US version. So there are just a bit, uh, some bits that are a bit different, but mostly it's the same. Well, actually, I can recommend one uh, one Finnish author who has been translated also into English. Or actually, she hasn't been translated because she writes her books uh, in Finnish and in English at the same time. Uh, she's called Emmi Itaranta, and her book The Weight of Water has come out also here, here in UK. So check that out. It's uh, it's YA, but it's also crossover dystopian book about a future where water is very scarce, so I can recommend that. <laughs> uh, Edinburgh has been so far really, really nice. The sun is shining, people seem very happy, and it's lovely to be here at the festival, because this is my second time in Edinburgh, but my first time at the book festival. Um, well, when I, when I heard that Sophie McKenzie was going to be there and I'd read some of her books, I was interested to see what she had to say. And no, I think they played off, um, not played off each other, they kind of interacted really well and um, just seemed to yeah. have a kind of bond, didn't it? They were just interesting to listen to. So Natural, that's why we came yeah. and thought, oh, I'll have to get Salah's book and, yeah. and read about it, didn't we? Yeah, yeah it's, it made you want to go off and read about read the trilogy. Them, yeah. Yeah. Well, I've just started the, um, like, uh, what's it called? The Spy, the Gallagher Girls ones by Ali. Sorry, I don't know her name. Um, I can't remember who that this, is. Um, I tell you I love you, but then I'd have to kill you. I think there's quite a lot in that as well, so sticking with the theme. I suppose Thriller is kind of my favourite, but you know I'm happy to be introduced to any genre, really. I think you kind of feel closer to it. It's more easy to read and like natural kind of... Like, not the school ones are boring, but... I find these ones much more interesting. And Probably you've, you've, you've chosen it. Sometimes yeah, that yeah. makes a bit of a difference. Yeah, when you can pick something that you want to read rather than being given a, a list of here you yeah. go, this is what you've got to do. It's a it's good, good atmosphere. Just, yeah, it is a good atmosphere. It's just interesting when you come along and find out about these people, what they've written the book, and they're just really interesting people themselves, yeah. aren't they? Yeah, it's good.